We begin with prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we believe that your advent as our Savior was foretold by men of old. We believe that in your lowly birth of the Virgin Mary, the scriptures have been fulfilled, and that you, the very Son of God, through whom all things were created, have assumed human form. You came here in lowliness as the Lamb of God to bear our sins in your own body on the cross and to suffer and to die there for us. Direct our footsteps this morning through your holy word and help us to lead our lives so that we might conform them to your holy will. We ask that you would bless our worship here this morning. Amen. This morning for our Christmas Day service, we're going to be journeying through the scriptures. We're going to be following a service that has been used for over a hundred years now. As we take a look at lessons from the Old and the New Testament, and we see the promises that God made as well as how he has fulfilled them. And then we'll be singing our praises that are connected to those promises of God in the carols that will follow. You can follow the order of services as found in your bulletin. We begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
rise for prayer. We'll be following the responsive prayer as it's found in your bulletin. Let us lift up our hearts to God in prayer, praising as our Savior has taught us and with confidence because he has promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Turn us from all false doctrine and evil living by which your name is blasphemed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your son, by faith, that your church may be expanded and increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands, we commend all who are in need, praying for them at all times, your will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us to trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust in your great mercy to hear and answer us, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 You may be seated.
Our journey through the scriptures begins at the beginning. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 3 as we read the reason for our need of a Savior and God's promise to give that Savior to all the world. After the fall into sin, we hear the response of Adam and Eve and the Lord's promise both to them as well as the promise to the serpent to destroy his power over mankind. And they, that is Adam and Eve, heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Within Christianity today, there are many who view the account of Genesis, as well as much of the Old Testament, just as a fictional fairy tale, a myth of how things might have happened. But as we journey through the scriptures this morning on this Christmas day, we'll notice that without these important parts of the Old Testament, nothing in the New Testament makes any sense. The, the New Testament is the fulfillment of all that God has planned and promised throughout history. And so we rejoice not in a myth or a fairy tale on this day, but in the fulfillment of God's actual promises to Adam and Eve and to all of his people throughout history. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This next hymn is one of the newer Christmas hymns, but it does a wonderful job of bringing in many Old Testament passages and tying them to their fulfillment. We sing, O Sing of Christ.
hymn that we just sang, we spoke about the losing of perfection. We as human beings cannot reclaim that perfection on our own. One of the ways in which the Lord does work to reclaim that perfection is through the sacraments that he has given to us. And on this Christmas day, we are reminded of how he has redeemed each one of us through our baptisms and brought us into his kingdom and into his family. From the word of God, we learn that from the very beginning in the fall into sin in the garden, all of us have been lost. We are all born in sin and doomed to destruction. But the Lord has a promise for us. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Throughout the book of Genesis, we see how what was lost in the Garden of Eden continued on throughout history. In Genesis chapter 8, we're told that the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. And so unless, unless a person is brought to faith in the Lord Jesus, we are lost forever. Peter, speaking of Jesus of Nazareth, said, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is what we celebrate on this Christmas Day, the giving of that gift of salvation in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. God gave his son Jesus into death to atone for the sins of the whole world so that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. We thank God that he has given baptism as a means by which he works, even in little children, his divine grace, turning their hearts to faith, cleansing their sins, and receiving them into his kingdom. This simple act of baptism is so powerful because the Almighty God himself works through his word. In his letter to Titus, the Apostle Paul describes baptism as the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. And it is for this reason that Jesus in the last chapter of Mark says, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. It is appropriate then that we should here this morning administer this sacrament in the fear of the Lord and with due reverence and devotion. So I have some words for our parents as well as for the sponsors of the child this morning. Michael and Catherine, in bringing this child to baptism, you are observing the will of God, our Lord Jesus, who said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. When our Lord instituted the sacrament of baptism, he not only commanded that children be baptized, but also that they be taught to observe all those things which he has commanded. And so I ask you this morning, do you sincerely intend to bring Adeline up in the way of the Lord, to instruct her diligently in the truths of God's saving word, and to make faithful use of the assistance offered by his church? Do you also intend to encourage her by your word and by your example to be conscientious in the use of the means of grace so that she may grow in faith serve God with a Christian life, and remain in her baptismal grace even unto death? If so, then answer by saying yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Luke and Emma, you are here this morning to witness the fact that this child is baptized in the name of the triune God and with water, and that through this sacrament she has thereby obtained and possesses saving faith in the one true God. Furthermore, it is also your privilege and your responsibility to remember her in your prayers, to remind her of her baptism, 
and as far as possible to give encouragement and support to her parents as they work to bring her up in the truths of God's word. We pray that the Lord would give you the strength and the ability to do all that you are able to do and to also accomplish what you are not able to do. If you intend gladly and willingly to do this, then answer yes with the help of God. Yes. Want to bring her forward? Adeline received the sign of the cross both upon the forehead and upon the breast as a sign that you are one that has been redeemed by the Savior. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Adeline Deborah Mayhew or Ma Mancy, <laughs> I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Almighty God who has begotten you again to be his very own strengthen you through his spirit and keep you in that true Christian faith unto life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you have bestowed your grace upon Adeline, and we ask that you would strengthen her by your Holy Spirit, that she might grow and increase in the new life which you have created in her. Let her, as a living member of your church, by her life, honor and glorify your name, and finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance of heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to continue with the next hymn that's found in your bulletin on page 10. This hymn is an Advent hymn that emphasizes the work of Jesus for us, but you'll notice as we get to the end of this hymn that there's also a verse in here regarding baptism as a reminder that what Jesus has come to accomplish is given to us through the sacrament of baptism by which we are brought into his family. And so we join in the singing of the next hymn.
Our journey through the Old Testament continues as we move to the person of Abraham and how the Lord calls him by his grace out of the country where he was to receive the blessing of a land of descendants, but also through those descendants, the Lord would make him the father of the savior of the world who would be a blessing for all people. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired at Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. We'll continue with the singing of the next hymn. Throughout the history of the Old Testament, the Lord would continue to make promises of that coming Savior. We move to the promises through Isaiah, found about 700 years before the time of Christ. There Isaiah writes, The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this.
so we move from prophecy to fulfillment. We read in Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. As the Lord had announced and prophesied that Savior throughout the centuries, he also announced the birth of the Son of God and the Savior of the world to shepherds. We continue Luke's account in Luke chapter 2. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child, and all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. 
Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Of the four gospel writers, only Luke records the account of the birth of Jesus. But for our last reading this morning, we will consider the words of the Apostle John, as he not only describes the event of the incarnation, of God becoming flesh for us, but also the meaning of the incarnation for all people. We read from John chapter 1, the first 14 verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We will have a duet introduce the first two verses of the next hymn. The congregation is invited to join in the chorus and the final stanza. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
please rise for prayer. O God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he comes again as the judge of all, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. You may be seated for the singing of the final hymn.